Hi today we're going to talk about KREA.AI, a tool based on stable diffusion, which has done a lot of hype because of its crazy upscale. So, of course, we'll go over the upscale and other tools we have here. We're going to talk about Kriya's free version, from what I understand most of the features here are free right now. First of all, real-time generation, we'll go over it, enhanced and upscale, and we have generations here that are based either on logos or on certain patterns, a bit similar to the QR trend we saw a year ago on Stable. So let's start with real-time generation, down here there's the place for the prompt, I wrote a photo of water splash here, and right now that's what we're getting, I'm currently in image to image, let's click text to image for a moment, and now we're based only on the text. Now the beauty of this tool is that it gives you some idea of how the words you write can affect your image. Sometimes there are words that we think are influential and not at all influential, and sometimes we have words that we don't think are so influential, but they are very meaningful in terms of our photos. This tool really lets you understand which words are more meaningful and which are less meaningful, and this way we can understand how to write our prompts in a more interesting way. As you can see the picture here isn't the highest quality, at least it doesn't feel that way, so here on the right side we have the option to do quick enhance, which gives some sharpness, and makes a kind of refinement to your photo, and then we get an image that is a little higher quality. If you want to use these images that you created in real time, on the right side you have a download button, and you can download the images to your computer, you can also send it for further enlargement and refinement, but we'll get to that later. With this tool you can also use image to image, you can just upload an image here and build on it, and not just upload an image, if you pay attention to the tools that we have here on the left, in the middle more or less, we can also generate an image, and this image becomes a basis for our picture, let's make this thing a little bigger. The canvas here isn't the friendliest, but we'll get along with it and right now this picture also affects the prom pet. It doesn't look like that at the moment, but if you look we have a slider up here, which we can also play with, and as soon as we take it off you see that little by little we get something a little more reminiscent of the picture. This slider is probably something very similar to the DE noise that we have in stable every interface like this, that's how Leonardo is called, this slider is called in a slightly different way but in the end, it does the same thing. That's how we can work in image to image. There's something else interesting here that we can do screen to image, which is a pretty nice game, I choose to share a YouTube screen here, I put some fractals video here, and let's go back to KREA. And you can see the projection of the image, I'll try for a moment to drag it all over the image, it's a little annoying, but of course we'll manage. There may be a shortcut to it and I don't know, we have it now on the whole picture, and slowly we will give it some time and we will see these fractals start to mix a bit in our water splash. It can be a nice tool in itself, it's all a question of what purpose you obviously need it for. If you look here on the left again, then we also have the option to share a camera, mine is not connected at the moment, so I won't show you that. Here we can also add all kinds of shapes, and these shapes will also take part in our Jinrot. If you don't want some shape, highlight it and click delete. That's pretty much about the live pay attention here on the right, we didn't talk about it, so you have all kinds of options here, it's like presets, which they put in advance for us, apparently behind these presets there are different keywords and models, which simply give us a different result according to the prompt pet we write, so here too you can play a little and see what interests you more, I remind you that if there is something you liked, just click on enhance, and then we get some kind of upgrade to our image that we can save. Let's go back to home again and see down here that we have the canvas option. Click new canvas project. 
Here we come to a kind of work surface that is very reminiscent of Leonardo. On the top left we have prompts place. Here we have a kind of magic prompt, if we compare it to Leonardo. You can write the general idea here, let's say photo of top model and KREA will try to create a prompt based on the words you wrote as you can see, there is some kind of extension to prompt here. This is probably a language model that is behind the scenes that helps you formulate your prompts, and as you can see you can use this image, just drag it to the canvas, and then you can work with it, control and mouse wheel, you can slightly increase the canvas, pay attention to the percentages you have here is 100% of the image. If you want to close this window, just click on the icon again. By the way, to see all the components of the process and all the parameters you can click on the advanced setting, and here you have the ratio, length of width, CFG how strong the front pet is, you can add a negative prompt. Depending on which models you are working on, sometimes it is significant, you can sharpen the image, and of course you can set the number of steps and if you want to set the seed number, you can write your number here or leave it what it was and now you can check how each part affects the image. If you change the prompt it is the only thing that will affect the image. So that's pretty much what we have here. As you can see, all the photos you've created are here on the left. You can drag them to the canvas. Going forward, I guess what KREA will allow us to do is put these things together. Very similar to Leonardo. Not all of these features work yet. As you can see, you have all kinds of options above the picture, let's click on style. It brings the image here and I can choose what style I want, we'll write pencil drawing and see if it will give us something interesting. As you can see in this case, we didn't really manage to keep the image but we definitely got something in a kind of pencil drawing. So as you understand you have to play with it, let's go over a few more things we have the expand option to expand the image is currently quite limited in terms of the amount of pixels you can expand. An interesting option we have here is face swap, where we can actually swap faces within KREA, let's see if KREA was able to take this image and make it similar to our original. We'll probably get something close and not something that's really it. We'll put them next to each other. So as you can see there is a difference from the original picture. Let's also put this picture here for us to compare. And you can see that there are similarities but it's not exactly the same character this is how face swap works, as you probably know from other programs, let's see if there is anything else interesting, if you want to take only the character from the image and get rid of the background then you can do it in this option. This can be useful once they allow us to combine images together. You might be able to do this on the paid version, but I didn't succeed on the free version. As soon as I mark the two pictures, as you can see, I put one picture on top of the other, so I press control and highlight both, and then there is a frame around the two pictures, now there are buttons here that I didn't have in a single picture, clicking on the mix for that matter opens up the option of paying. So I guess with a paid plan we might be able to do these combinations of an image here, or parts from one picture to another, and get some kind of mixing between these two parts. It can be interesting, but in my opinion at Leonardo you can also do it in the free version, and of course there is Photoshop with the generative fill and more, that's what we've seen here, let's see if I haven't missed something. Let's say we want to erase the earring here, so we can take the pencil, and just mark the area we don't want, and you see that KREA processes and as soon as it is finished it will erase the object we marked and fill in the background, as soon as it suits us just press V. Quite a few tools, recolor the image in some interesting color, and you have to play quite a bit to really get the results you want. So this is the coloring of the pictures in pastel pink. 
As you can see it doesn't keep our original image but it does give something similar in terms of composition maybe and the position of the frame. Let's go back to the home page for a moment and here we can now enter enlargements. I've done all kinds of tests here, these are the tests that come with KREA, and it looks amazing for starters, but if you notice, it's really completely different pictures. This picture is very high quality, with lots of details, very interesting, but it is completely different from our original picture both in terms of color and in terms of the structure. So it can be great for lots and lots of uses if it's for improving food photography like the examples they gave us or things that were really badly photographed like this frog and then we want to get new information that didn't exist and basically make it up. But if we look at an example that a lot of us might be thinking about, which is to take photos from a family album and improve them, it really depends on what settings you make here in magnification, and we'll look at it right away. But the result I get here is completely different from the original image and this can be very significant when we talk about pictures of close people, certainly our memories. The closest result I've been able to get is this one, as you can see it's not a quality picture and we get a bit of an improvement in quality, but somehow it preserves some detail, but of course the picture still looks old. With this tool you can reach really different things, and again all the changes you see here, all the differences, are based on the two sliders I have here on the left, eye strength, which is actually the power or freedom of action that we give to the model, and the resemblance strength, which is actually how close this image is to a source image, the higher it is, the more similar we will maintain to our original image. I did another example here with a photograph of a face that will make it easier for us to see it. This is the original picture, as you can see, it's a similar girl, but completely different in terms of age, also in terms of eyes, the color of the lips, everything is actually different. And the fact that I'm working on AI strength of 0.5 and resemblance of 0.7, and once I lowered the value of the AI and left the resemblance relatively high, then we get something that is more similar to the original image, but this is still a different picture. If you want a little more information, then I'll attach a link to this page in the Parton's description, here are the definitions of these tools and what each tool does, and you can of course delve into it a little more. So hope you learned, and when we meet in the next lessons, and most importantly, have fun. Bye.